So today we want to dive into Biden bucks. We want to talk about CBDCs. We want to maybe talk about what's happened um, and then where we go from here, some upcoming catalysts. Jim, I'll let you take it from here. So what we call Biden bucks is a central bank digital currency. Uh, central bank digital currency is a mouthful. CBDC for short. We like the term Biden bucks because this is being driven by Joe Biden. And obviously it involves dollars, some $400 uh, in the form of central bank digital currency. So we call it Biden bucks. It's a great brand. It's a, it's a great shorthand. Uh, but what it is technically is a, a US dollar central bank digital currency. Um, so what's a central bank digital currency? Why is it different than you know the dollars you may have in your purse or wallet or in your bank account or brokerage account or any other kind of dollar? Um, First of all, and there's a lot of confusion on this, a central bank digital currency is not a cryptocurrency. Uh, it is digital. CBDCs are digital. The message traffic is encrypted. That's what makes a cryptocurrency. A cryptocurrency has other characteristics. Number one, uh, it's recorded on a blockchain. So your ownership of, you know, Bitcoin, Ether, you know, I think they're like two, two or three thousand separate. Uh, cryptocurrencies, but um, you know, Bitcoin's the biggest. Take your pick. Uh, but that ownership is recorded on a, a digital ledger uh, using a technology called the blockchain. I don't. We don't have to do a deep dive on what the blockchain is. Although uh, law enforcement uh, officials, I'm, I'm acquainted with, love it because um, it's a, every transaction from day one, from Satoshi Nakamoto, you know, creating this thing in 2009 and taking a big chunk for himself. By the way, uh, to uh, hundreds of uh, of millions of, uh, of bitcoins. Uh, sorry, not that many bitcoins. Hundreds of millions of dollars equivalent. Uh, it's about twenty one million, uh, not quite uh, bitcoin out there. I think it's like nineteen getting close to twenty million. Um, it's capped at twenty one million. Again, we don't have time to discuss all that. That's that's bitcoin world. But uh, the thing about blockchain is that every transaction in bitcoin from day one is it's recorded on the same blockchain. Now it's supposedly anonymous because you need a you know a, a certain a key, what's called a what's called a key, uh, to, uh, to you know unlock it and transfer it, and move it around, etc. Um, but when law enforcement can crack the key, which is not hard to do forensically, or certainly if it's on an exchange because they're requiring the exchanges to hand over the records, you've got a complete list of all the transactions. So if you're um, you know your criminal tax evader, uh, you know or work um, or your terrorist, or you know, I've worked uh, in, ter in terms of counterterrorism, in terms of you know, kind of unlocking these keys, uh, which can be done forensically. Um, if they got if they got you at all, they got everything you've ever done. So uh, it's don't don't think anonymity is a shield. It's, it can actually be uh, used by law enforcement to kind of get your whole record. But that but that's an aside. That's not what central bank digital currencies are. Central bank digital currencies are digital, uh, electronic. In other words, um, and um, the message traffic is encrypted, but they're not recorded on a blockchain. They're recorded on a digital ledger that's controlled by, guess who? The government that issues the currency. Now you have different agencies. Uh, it's not quite clear yet whether the ledger, um, the crypto ledger for the, uh, for the digital dollar, the central bank digital currency, will be the U.S. Treasury or the Federal Reserve. But it doesn't matter. They're just two arms of the government. Government and all the information will be shared with the, uh, our friends at the FBI uh, and uh, Homeland Security and the CIA and and a lot of other government agencies. So I will, we'll talk more about the implications of all that. Um, but it's what's called a um, permission ledger, meaning not any. And that's the other thing about a cryptocurrency. If I want to buy some Bitcoin, and I don't, by the way, but if I did, it'd be pretty easy to do. Anybody can jump in buy directly from a seller or through an exchange. Uh, um, and again, it get, all gets recorded on the blockchain, but uh, it, it's open to anybody. There are no no limitations. Um, whereas a central bank digital currency, you'd have to have some kind of account. Uh, and those permission ledger means you need permission to join the ledger. It might not be strict. It's not like getting a driver's license, but you're going to need a bank account or in some versions of this, you could have an account directly at the Federal Reserve. Um, you know, I could have an account. You could have an account. We could have it on our iPhone phone or, or smartphone or whatever using you know passwords and qr codes and all that uh, good stuff and move money around uh pay third parties uh or pay and receive 
it's just on your account, whatever it might be. Um, but uh, that uh, again requires an account, requires permission, but subject to that, you could enter the system, but it's different from Bitcoin because there are no limitations on who can jump into the Bitcoin pool. Um, so that's about it. It's uh, it's it's digital, as I say. It will be um, uh, protected in theory unless it gets hacked. But it's between you and the government, uh, you know. And that's uh, that's new. I mean, right now, who knows what's in your bank account? Well, the bank does. You know, obviously, the bank knows. You get a bank statement every month. You go online and check it whenever you like. And who knows what's in your brokerage account? Well, your broker does. You know, whether it's Charles Schwab or or uh, you know, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, whoever it might be. So, but it's between you and your banker or MasterCard and Visa. Uh, and by the way, I make the point that message traffic in almost everything you do is already digital. It's already electronic. And again, all the message traffic is encrypted. So if you do something with MasterCard, um, I mean, how does that work? Uh, you know, I go buy a book, uh, let's say a bookstore, I use my MasterCard and they sell me the book and that's that, uh, but it's not. Uh, the, the retailer who sold me the book now has basically a due, a due bill from me. Um, what are they going to do with it? Well, they sell it to somebody called a merchant acquirer. And a merchant acquirer is a financing business, a factoring business. And they buy up you know, hundreds of millions or even billions of dollars of credit card receivables from the retail merchants. So they're the ones who pay the retailer uh, the bookstore in my case, or it could be, you know, grocery store, it could be anybody, they pay them uh, and they get the receivable. So what do they do with it? What does the merchant acquire do with it? Well, they deliver it to MasterCard or Visa, depending on which credit card I'm using. Uh, MasterCard Visa pay them. Okay. I, now they're happy. What does MasterCard do with the receivable? Well, they deliver it to the bank that issued the credit card. And there are thousands of banks, so they've got systems for that. So, uh, you know, I've got a couple of different bank accounts. They issue, I've got, I don't know, one couple of MasterCards and a Visa, whatever. Um, so MasterCard and Visa will deliver to the bank that issued my credit card. And then what does the bank do? Well, they send me a bill and I pay it. So that's that. But the point is, I talked about buying a book, but you've got five parties in the transaction. You've got me, the retailer, the merchant acquirer, MasterCard, and the bank. You've got five parties and everybody's getting charged a fee. Uh, you know, when I say the merchant acquirer buys it from the retail or and so on, uh, yeah, but they buy it at a slight discount. So you to buy a book, one book, or it could be a candy bar or a can of soda or whatever, um, you've got five parties, you know, the buyer, the retailer, the merchant acquirer, the, the credit card issuer, and the bank, and about two and a half percent fees, depending on the credit card and, and your volumes and all that. Well, that's a lot of parties and that's a lot of transactions and that's a lot of fees to buy one book. Uh, and so what are the advocates of central bank digital currency? say? I'll get to the critics. I'm one of them. We'll get to that in a minute. But if you're pushing this agenda, you're Joe Biden or, you know, Janet Yellen, she doesn't know much about it, but your your government official pushing the central bank digital currency, what do they say about it? Well, they say, well, it's better, faster, cheaper. I mean, I, I just kind of explain if you could deal directly with, let's say, the Treasury, uh, you know, they, they, I pay them and then they pay the bookseller, in my example. Um, now you're down to like two parties plus one intermediary and, you know, fewer fees because, you know, they don't have to make a lot of money on it. Um, so there, there are fewer parties, fewer fees, better, faster, cheaper. What's wrong with that? Well, on its face, there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm not I'm not, not anti-technology. I use all this all the time. And you think about it, uh, you know, you're, you know, our, our readers are are no different uh, than, than anybody else. You've got, you know, you've got bank accounts, you've got credit cards, you've got brokerage accounts, et cetera. But that's all digital. I mean, how much cash do you actually use? You might have some in your purse or wallet. Uh, you might use it every now and then, but um, not really. When you get paid by your employer, uh, you know, I get... Uh, I receive royalties in my books, et cetera. Uh, when you receive money, it's a wire transfer. It just shows up in my account. There's some record of it. Uh, when I pay bills, mostly online, you know, whatever, electric company or, uh, you know, my credit cards or whatever, um, you pay it online. Uh, when you send money to a friend or you receive money um, or, again, paying bills, uh, uh, making law, whatever, investing, whatever you're doing, it's all digital. You don't 
walked around with wads of cash and stick them in an envelope and send them. Uh, and that, the, those ledgers and, um, and message traffic are encrypted um, and use passwords and all that. So the system is already uh, digital, overwhelmingly, a little bit of cash, but not much, uh, already overwhelmingly digital and encrypted. So what's the difference between what we have today and the central bank digital currency that's coming? Um, well, to that extent, they're the same, but there are two big differences. Number one, uh, and probably the most important, the government's going to see everything. They don't right now. Uh, you know, if, uh, if they want to, they can, but, you know, at least under the Fourth Amendment, uh, uh, you know, to the extent we have, still have some law and order in this country, um, they need a subpoena. You know, MasterCard knows what I do. If I use a MasterCard, my bank knows what I do. If somebody pays me or I pay somebody else, um, if I'm paying bills, that they know that they got paid or not. If they don't, you, you, you hear from them soon enough. So it's not as if nobody knows anything about your financial transactions. They do, but the people, the parties that do are your bank, your broker, your suppliers, your customers, um, your employer, as the case may be. Uh, number one, they're all different. Each one of them knows their piece. Um, you know, uh, again, my publisher pays me royalties. You know, they paid me royalties. They don't know what I did with the money. They don't know what I bought. Uh, they don't know, you know if I invested in in some, uh, um, you know, some some investment, private equity, whatever it might be. So everybody knows their piece, but nobody knows the whole thing. Your bank comes closer, uh, but you can have two or three bank accounts, uh, and I do. It's not you know, for any uh, uh, any uh, you know, particular reason. It's just you know the way it is. Um, some banks pay higher interest than others, so everybody knows their piece, but nobody has the whole picture. Probably MasterCard or Visa come closer because we do so many things on credit cards. So they see a lot of what you're doing. But even then, and it's important to understand how they record transactions. Um, MasterCard and Visa use broadly defined product codes. So if I go into um, I don't know, Walmart and I want to buy a, a fishing rod or a, a nice chest or you know alarm clock, whatever it is, um, they have a code. It could be like general merchandise or uh, sporting goods. They might separate sporting goods and clothing and, you know, groceries, let's say. But that's it. They don't take it down to, you know, five pounds of, you know, ground beef and, uh, you know, and, and a fishing pole or, or uh, as you can say, an alarm clock. They're not that granular. Uh, and they don't have to be. They have to know kind of where the money's being spent, who to bill and how to collect and all that. But they, um, uh, again, they use these broad categories. So they would say, you know, Jim Rickers bought a, was it Walmart, whatever. Um, yeah, and somewhere uh, when they send me the bill, there's some record, if I want to look it up, that this was uh, in the sporting goods department of Walmart. It doesn't necessarily say fishing rod. In fact, it doesn't. Uh, just, again, these these are very broad categories. It might just say Walmart uh, with a date. Um, interesting aside, uh, the Biden administration, when they weren't busy working on Biden bucks, uh, pushed through a regulation saying that you had to identify guns as a, you know, guns and rifles and ammunition as a separate category. And they didn't used to do that. If, um, you know, we I, I live up in, uh, in New England, I'm in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and, you know, there's a lot of hunting and target shooting and guns are very popular here. Uh, but if you go to a Cabela's or Bass Pro Shop, or uh, we're not too far from L.L. Bean, uh, there are other vendors. Um, if you went in, uh, Again, they, they would record the fact that you went to L.L. Bean, but they didn't necessarily record whether you bought a kayak or um, a rifle, hunting rifle. Um, but now they do. The Biden administration pushed that through, and they have to segregate guns. And you think of that. The, the government has wanted a national gun registry forever um, because fascist governments want to know who has the guns in case you know there's a revolution or something. But uh, they just want to know in case they want to confiscate them all. Um, which would be a violation of the Second Amendment, but that hasn't stopped Biden so far. Um, so they've always wanted this national gun registry, and the NRA and gun right advocates have opposed that. But now you had to have it through MasterCard because they got a separate product code for guns and ammo. So that's that's not even Biden bucks. That's like we're not even up to central bank digital currencies, but it's an example of how the government is using the electric buy electronic buy and sell information to compile. Uh, registers that can be used against certain people for political reasons. Um, 
So, so that's all already gone. So now, let, now let's get to to Biden bucks. And I, I gave you. The- yeah, let me. Um, I'll sure I'll jump in for one second. I want to make sure. Um, anyone that's on the call today knows. And again, if this goes on to social afterwards or whatever, uh, um, you can throw comments, questions below. Um, I can see them live here on the call, but otherwise we are always paying attention to questions that are coming in. So go ahead and add those in. Um, the other thing, Jim, I wanted to make sure all the readers have, um, and this is one of those things where we were talking about the things we published, some of the stuff's free. Um, I'll share my screen real quick. Um, this is basically our team worked with Jim to come up with a full rundown, you know, a white paper, whatever you want to call it for Biden bucks. So th- this page, there's no password needed or whatever. Anyone can have this and you can get caught up. So um, Jim, you basically went through a lot of this sort of explained, you know, oh, there's some advantages of Biden bucks, you know, it's faster, quicker, whatever, but then there's the downside. So really quick, I'll just scroll through some of the stuff, you know, you've got all different pieces here that people can go on at their own leisure. Um, but the cool part, that we put into this white paper is sort of a timeline of things. So in the timeline here, we're right in the thick of things because last year, a year ago today, you unveiled the thesis and now starting everything's starting to pick up pretty quickly. So um, one, I want to just make sure everyone knows this white paper exists. We'll send it around to uh, strategic intelligence readers and records on sensor readers um, just so you've got it or we'll, we'll put a link to it in the comments. Um, so we'll do that. But why don't we, yeah, let's go forward now because everything's starting to get a little bit faster. So what do you think is happening in, you know, the coming months? Where are we going to from here? And what are some upcoming catalysts? And, and uh, you know, what should readers be aware of? Sure. Uh, a couple of things. Number one, this thing didn't happen overnight. The this the central bank digital currency, the Biden bucks have been in development for uh, about five years, maybe a little bit less, four and a half years, something like that. But they were, they meaning the Federal Reserve, because they were on point. They were kind of slow rolling it. They weren't in a big hurry. They were doing it. It was a joint research project between the Federal Reserve and MIT to work through the, you know, the uh, the structure of this and the electronic uh, challenges and some of the kinks in the system, et cetera. And, but they were taking their time. And I remind people that um, everyone knows the euro came out in the year 2000. It was used for, at an institutional level in 1999, but you couldn't actually get a, you know, a euro note in your hand. But in 2000, you could. So that is when it was rolled out uh, across the entire Eurozone and you had physical euros, coins and bills, uh, you know, just like uh, just like dollars. But that started in 1991 after the Maastricht Treaty when they said, okay, we're going to have a European Central Bank. We're going to have a common currency. So it took nine years, almost nine years to to work out all the issues and build the systems and roll it out. And even that was done in stages. So the fact that the Fed started this four years ago, you could kind of shrug and say, yeah, these things take a long time. Maybe in 10 years, we'll have a central bank digital currency. But that all changed radically in 2022. And that's when Joe Biden issued this executive order. And he basically said, you know, that read the executive order. It's, you know, five or six pages of fine print. But, uh, but what he basically, he ordered the Fed to step on the gas. He ordered the Fed, hey, accelerate this, you know, get get over the whole research thing. Let's just get this done and roll it out. Now, it still takes time, but uh, it was basically ordering the Fed to pick up the pace, and they have. Uh, so, yeah, I guess they, they know how to read orders uh, as well as anybody. Um, so what was a kind of slow motion research project at MIT has turned into a fast track development process to the point that right now, uh, June, July, uh, 2023, uh, the Fed is launching a system called Fed Now. Now I'll explain what that is in a second, but uh, it's important to tell when they launched Fed Now. They were they were sufficiently sensitive to this. By the way, Matt, a really quick aside, I want to congratulate our team, uh, yourself and our writers and our uh, video producers and our marketing people and everybody, because we not only rolled it, we thought this was important for people to know. That's that's the starting place. And then it, it caught on, went viral, whatever uh, phrase you want to use. And as you mentioned, uh, I have some old internal information that said we had 8 million views. I'm now, I learned this morning that's 12 and a half million views. So that, that's great. You know, maybe we'll, we'll get up to 20. So, uh, so we did all that, but we did it before anybody else. This was a real nerdy academic topic. I'm not saying nobody knew anything about central bank digital currencies. I'm saying it was pretty much confined to the nerds and the technicians and you know a few monetary economists. Even most economists don't know that much about it. And we were the ones who kind of like exploded it on the world stage. Now, there have been a lot of imitators. Every now and then I'll see a, 
a marketing promo. I was like, you know, talking about, you know, dollars, central. Like, oh, I didn't know we'd done that. And I'll click on this. Like, oh, no, it's not us. It's somebody copying us. That's okay. You know, it, the word is really getting out. But it's at the point now, do do think our team deserves credit for catalyzing this and for stirring this. But it's at the point now where certain state legislatures, and Florida is one, but there are others, have passed state laws banning central bank digital currencies. Now, I don't think those uh, those laws- Yeah, I just pulled this up too, Jim. Uh, this right. is something I had on the list in case we wanted to show this to uh, readers today too. But along the same lines you're talking about, the term Biden bucks, no one equated CBDCs with quote unquote Biden bucks until you did it a year ago today. People had turned Biden bucks, like sometimes they were calling stimulus, like free money, Biden bucks. But talking about it as a, as a CBDC, that was your report. And then this is this is just on Fox Business. This is just one example. So this was May 13th. This is, I mean, this, you know, possible, you know, down the road, you know, candidates, presidents, whatever it is, they're using your term in right. their either legislation or their party platform or whatever it may be. Right. Here's the, here's the governor of Florida, presidential candidate, possible future president saying Biden bucks. Well, it's a, it's good writing, it's good alliteration, but that but that was our name. We came up with it, but now it is in the popular discourse. And that's and I'm very proud of that because it is important for people to know. And if we played a hand in that, which we did, uh, I think it's a, a really good credit to our team. But you're right. It's now everyday jargon. As I say, central bank digital currencies is a mouthful that Biden bucks, you know, kind of rolls off the tip of the tongue and people understand what it means. So we're having yeah. that impact. And it's not just at the state level. Some members of Congress, I know some of them, have introduced legislation to stop central bank digital currency. Now, a couple of things, just not to get too deep in the weeds. You know, credit to Governor DeSantis for, you know, pushing that law through Florida and trying to stop it. It's not clear to me that that's constitutional. It, you know, again, politically, nice move. Uh, I'm all for it, but I'm also a lawyer and I took care of constitutional law. And uh, it, it's, it's not, it does uh, seem that the federal government, the United States government, has sole authority over you know, what's called, coin, called coins, coining money, basically it's money. Uh, we want well past coins, uh, you know, gold back, not gold back, paper money, digital money, et cetera. But it's all um, that power is reserved to the federal government. So, not clear that there's much you can do about it at the state level. I credit people for trying, but that's something that's going to get litigated. There are members of Congress. Uh, so, there you're dealing at the federal level who are trying to stop. It. But of course, the Republicans are a minority, or sorry, they're the majority in the House, but no clout in the Senate, and um, the president would veto it. So, uh, and by the way, this is very typical of how fascist societies develop. And that the leading, the thought leader, this was a 20th century philosopher named Karl Popper. Uh, his book was called The Open Society, but being a fascist, he really meant the closed society. Um, but he came up with a, a concept called piecemeal social engineering. What does piecemeal social engineering mean? It's basically like cutting salami, you know, one slice at a time. You don't have to eat the whole salami once, just one slice at a time you'll eventually get through the whole thing. And so this is an example of, you know, I mean, okay, DeSantis might be president, but you know, not forever, and he might not be. Uh, we might, who knows, we might get another four years of Biden. Uh, it'll take him that long to build his railroad across the uh, Indian Ocean uh, here. But um, but the point, but uh, when you get back to the Fed, I uh, uh, know people, you know, pretty thoughtful analysts who think that Jay Powell's not really in favor of this. He's being dragged along. Well, that may be, uh, but, uh, Jay Powell's not going to be around for He's been on the board of governors since, uh, I think, 2008. So that's 15 years, uh, or maybe earlier, but that's 15 years on the board of governors. And he's in the second term as Fed chair. No one's had more than two terms except uh, Alan Greenspan. So so the point is, Jay Powell's not going to be around forever. Uh, so And Biden has already lined up Jay Powell's replacement. Uh, and that person is going to be a loyal foot soldier. Uh, same thing with the Treasury Secretary, Anna Riellen, and they're going to throw her under the bus once the economy goes into recession. But you might get Larry Fink, who's a you know globalist and elitist and all the rest. So, uh, you know, I applaud the political pushback, and you gave us a very good example of that. But as a lawyer and, and an analyst, I have to question whether it, how effective it will be, because they just keep moving. Uh, and they don't stop. Um, and a lot of this done behind the scenes, which brings me brings us back to the Fed Now project. So uh, it was interesting when they 
and now it's fed now and i'll explain what it is in a second they said this is not a cryptocurrency so this is not a central bank digital currency i thought it was interesting that, that they had to take pains to disclaim the fact that it was not a central bank digital currency which means they were very sensitive to the criticism that was coming in their way partly through our efforts and partly through the biden bucks campaign so they all of a sudden they went from s is technical no one understands it to like oh gee it's a little bit of popular outrage out there. We better mute that uh, by saying it's not um, a central bank digital currency. Of course, with the government, whenever they say it's not something, you know it is. They just lie. And so this is an advance in the central bank digital currency. So what is Fed now? Fed now is a kind of wholesale uh, telecommunications or channels among banks, between bank banks messaging each other and messaging the Fed. Uh, so it's a payment channel. It's not at retail. It's not in your bank account yet. It's you know you don't have central, you're not being forced into central bank digital currencies yet. But this is a step in that direction. Obviously, if you're going to roll out something to, you know, 330 million Americans, you want to make sure it works. <laughs> like remember the Obamacare website? It took years to get the legislation passed, and the website crashed on the first day. So you don't want something like that, particularly not with money. So the Fed's got to do a lot of tests, but this is how they do it. Remember I said earlier, the euro was tested between banks in 1999. It wasn't rolled out to the public until 2000, even though they've been working on it for eight years. So Fed now is in fact a form of central bank digital currency, even though they say it's not. And it's just being confined to the bank Fed level uh, in terms of all the payment channels, you know, ACH and Fedwire and, and other payment channels. Fed now is an update on that, but it's getting ready for the central bank digital currency. That's the point. So when they roll it out to the public and we all start using it, uh, because we probably have no choice, um, we want to make sure that behind the curtain at the back level of the institutional level, everything works. So yes, this is new. Uh, it's rolling out as we speak uh, with the course of June and July. Um, and it is a step in the direction of central bank digital currency, which is consistent with Biden's executive order. Biden said, you know, get your, uh, you know, get your butts in gear and get this done. And they are.